And that's the basis of our first conversation happening in Abuja. Malcolm. Oh, that's Chamberlain. <laughs> Well, good morning, guys. Yes, indeed, we've got a... <laughs> yeah, you, understandably. You'll have to get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> understandably. Well, we've got uh, Mr. Dati Baba Ahmed joining us this morning. He is the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Good morning, and thank you for coming on today. A pleasure and duty. <laughs> thank you. Well, you know, yes, it's that time when lots of people just... Uh, I mean, you... The issues are there... Um, Lots of people want to, of course, everybody wants their life to be better. No matter what it is that they're going through, they always want something better. But talking about the messages, uh, your party, your focus, your intentions, how would you say your message, your party's message, your candidate, yourself, how is that message resonating with the people? Pleasantly. It gives hope. And it is already uniting Nigeria in advance. You can see that um, as certain um, nationalities, as we call it in Nigeria, uh, even though we're, just, we're one nation, certain groups feel that there is effort, including others, to make theirs come to power. You can see that tension is actually coming down in Nigeria. So there's a lot of hope for a better life, for better security, and uh, already Nigeria is uniting. Okay. By, and the factor now, the single most important factor uniting Nigeria is the candidacy of Peter Obi, if but, you read in between the lines. Okay. But you know that um, several elections, several narratives, politicians... And, and, and the candidacy of others yeah. is um, actually doing otherwise. <laughs> Even though they will say the same thing of your uh, candidature, your party's candidature, but uh, that's within the realm of politicians. But they will, not have, the kind of, they will not have the kind of back-up logic that we have. How it do is you mean? Easy, it is easy to say anything. Um, but it is, it is not easy to back it up How? with true facts. Now, what I'm telling you is that the most important factor uniting Nigeria and giving hope now is the candidacy and likely success of Peter Obi in 2023 elections and the persistence of others uh, to rule Nigeria is doing otherwise. I mean... Just this is a comment laden with with uh, a lot of meanings. Peter Obi on one has on one hand is driven by his uh, Labour Party candidates. Assume I'm not the one speaking. Are driven by their records. They are stepping on what they succeeded in to attempt to lead Nigeria. Other candidates I don't have to mention are swimming on the ocean of wealth and power, and so they want to rule Nigeria. But you know, the thing about politics in Nigeria is that it's, I mean, globally, it's not usually that straightforward. No matter how uh, your message may be resonating with the people, how lofty you think your ideals or ideas may be, it's always a different kettle of fish when you get to the field out there, especially this scenario where, uh, as it is now, strategy, what's playing now, hasn't really been tested so now that, that tells extent. you that tells you the kind of democracy we are practicing after 24 years um, it is very sad that uh, what you keep hearing endlessly are the three arms of government in a democratic government and uh, th that is more than taken for granted there are maybe three conditions for democracy and this is like philosophically different from what, you, what we are used to hearing, just to attend to your point. One, democracy must not be about individuals or small groups or any group for that matter. It must be about a political entity for it to qualify as democratic. So it's of, about national and general bigger interest. Two, 
the aspirations and the desires and the will of the people, that's number two, must reflect in their elections. And this is what you're saying, it doesn't, which means we are yet to meet the second um, philosophical condition of democracy. The third one is that, as provided in the Constitution, the people must hold the power on whose behalf the elected government exercises the authority. What you have now is that governments, once elected or once they impose themselves, they hold the power and they exercise the authority. So conditions two and three, that's by submission condition two is not there. And I'm telling you also condition three um, is questionable. Mm. And, and therefore, our democracy needs, needs to be strengthened by the will of the people reflecting in the 2023 elections. If um, after 24 years, if eight years of promises to the world, uh, we suffered this kind of disappointment, then every, the will of every Nigerian the cries of every Nigerian, 2023 election results, if they don't reflect the pain in the hearts of Nigerians, then this is anything but democracy. Well, you are no rookie to politics. Uh, you've been in the system for quite a while. You've been elected as senator, so has your principal. Um, he's been elected as governor. He's worked as governor in Anambra State for eight years. Uh, you have also done some work in the legislative arm of the uh, country at the federal level, and um, you understand just how it works. I mean, if there's anywhere where, we, where democracy really comes to play, it is in the National Assembly, where oftentimes uh, the minority will have its say and the majority will have its way. Uh, from your understanding of how the National Assembly works, which is supposed to be, which is supposed to typify um, how Nigeria works and how, you know, for over, over the many years now we have been talking about devolution of powers, we've been talking about restructuring and the brick wall that, you know, we've often met at the National Assembly. Some of the changes which you're hoping to, you know, pass across or make when eventually you get to office, how do you hope that, you know, some of these changes, assuming they were constitutional, how do you hope that they will be able to sail through? In Labour Party, you don't have governors who are responsible or who actually appointed their three senators and the maybe 90, 95% of their House of Reps members. In Labour Party, you don't have that. You don't have a president, Peter Obi, who dictated um, where the party should head and he, who handpicked the leadership of the party and, by extension, uh, so many other members of the National Assembly. The National Assembly in our dispensation is going to be truly independent. What we'll have would be mutual respect and a cordial working relationship based on the tenets of true de democracy. Are you also hoping, I mean... Are you also hoping that Labour Party will sweep uh, the polls uh, when it comes to the parliamentary elections as well? Or maybe I should use... Um, I'm trying <laughs> to find assembly. the National <laughs> Assembly elections because that's what we use here. I'm optimistic, um, which is different from hoping. I wish this will happen. But we are doing our best and we are doing well in making good of a bad situation. Remember, uh, a little over 24 hours to governorship elections in Kaduna, when it became apparent that I'd, I had to pay for delegates' votes and I quit. The same 24 hours later, His Excellency Governor Peter Obi quit the presidential race and left PDP. Um, technically, these are times when the National Assembly primaries were over. To come to where we are now, 
with the senatorial and House of Reps candidates that we've been able to gather, I think we've done well in making good of a bad situation. We came, we came in pretty, pretty, well, it's nearly too late. Mm -hmm. We've done very well and we've got some very good materials mm -hmm. uh, to, to work with us. Even those that are not too good, I tell you, when the system is good, mm -hmm. it has a way of propping up the not so good elements. Let me, I mean, I, I, it, it's interesting that one of the issues we, you, which you have identified and which you, you, you think that the candidature of your principal and, mm -hmm. your, and yourself, you know, is already beginning to change mm -hmm. is a narrative of uniting Nigerians. Nigeria being, mm -hmm. Nigeria being a united mm -hmm. country. Um, but let me take you to the economy, which is another area that is currently bleeding. One of the major headaches we've had from administration to administration has been this issue of fuel subsidy. A lot of Nigerians find it very difficult to understand that a country as rich as we are, producing, uh, you know, with some, some of the world's largest oil reserves and gas reserves, uh, you know, still struggling the way we are economically and that we have not been able to diversify. I mean, in the areas where we have, it's been owing to the genius of the people themselves, for instance, in the arts, in, in entertainment. Um, how do you hope that, first and foremost, we are able to tackle this monster called fuel subsidy, given the current um, global economic realities? The philosophy of the party, the leadership style and attitude, of the leader. Um, at the moment, um, a decision to retain subsidy will have to come from the very top of those of, our, of a formed government. So I'm not really at liberty to preempt what will happen then. But I can tell you that as a party, we frown at two things the whole idea behind subsidy. Two, we cry out over the circumstances surrounding subsidy. More than, more than frowning, we're crying over the foul play uh, around uh, fuel uh, subsidy. Uh, now, uh, if you have a leader that is clearly mm -hmm. fighting corruption, clearly, so all the bad um, activities going on around subsidy, immediately will be eliminated. Mm. So then, you leave, you would now leave subsidy for truly what it is. The rest of it is, is there really, really need to, to retain subsidy? Um, what are the palliatives? What soft landings? Do you given? think there's a need for it? Uh, you're asking me a personal, this is not party position for now, and this is, may not be the position of my principal. I, th I think there is no need for it because there are many other ways of compensating Nigerians. I'm always on the welfare side. I'm on the side of um, waste less in procurement. Procure more efficiently and then rem remunerate better, far better. By the time you remunerate better, you would have more than compensated for the withdrawal of subsidy. Mm. And I'm speaking to you yeah. about the typical family budget. Mm. Uh, yeah. 18.9 billion is what they say we spend monthly. 18.9 yeah. billion naira is what they say we spend monthly now on fuel subsidy. So you can imagine, I mean, when you compute that over a period over of... A year. Is it monthly or is it daily? I think that, that no, figure... I think that was, that that figure was, was even daily. daily. Because <laughs> the, I think it was, uh, the figure was even daily. I mean, it, it's something... It, it, when you compute now, that over a period... What you should reflect on yeah. are the comments of President Buhari and uh, before he came to power on subsidy. That's precisely where I was going to take you to. The fact that he did not acknowledge that there was anything called fuel subsidy. Thank as far you. as he was concerned, it that was, was corruption. It was yes. corruption that was happening there. And he ended there. up practicing that same corruption. But when he got into office, anyone. you know, it, it, the, the story became quite different. You know, now we see it, now we don't see it. The, the next minute we hear, oh, we've stopped putting fuel subsidy. The next minute we hear, oh, it's back there or there's under-recovery, as the case might be. So there's, it would seem that 
as a result of that, there needs now to be a clearer, uh, will I say, understanding or a clearer showing of understanding by the parties. Because the Nigerians will say, we've been here, we've, we've asked those questions, we asked them in 2015. The answer was that there was no subsidy. It is corruption that is happening there. So mm. what is going to be different this time around? How do you hope to tackle this headlong? The refineries, uh, the refineries mm -hmm. will be determined. And when I say determined, I'm speaking in the capital D in the, in the legal perspective. If they are insolvent, as the, uh, the case may be, uh, government will have to decide uh, keep them, privatize them, or they operate optimally and commercially. Then their capacity, when they were established decades ago, uh, compare that to the consumption capacity of Nigeria. This is a government that is moving us away from consumption to production, fundamentally. It's one of our building blocks. We're going to produce our refined petroleum products. From that, you are already eliminating subsidy. OK. You know, we'll, we'll, then then we'll, the um... Buhari case has always been a tragedy to Nigeria. You are speaking of people who had no understanding of what governance was and uh, found it easy to make wild allegations against each and everybody. Everybody was wrong, only they were right. But you were in his party, you were in the CPC. Um, yes and no. Because, thank you for asking me this question. It is on record, I was the only candidate in APC who never stepped foot in Buhari's quarters while we contested. I was literally Post by my politicians in, in Kaduna North then, because I am always in the leading opposition political party into CPC. When the then candidate Buhari called for in Hausa, I will try to translate it, cast your vote, protect your vote, escort your vote, and when they touch it, it's them. The moment I heard that, I withdrew from Buhari. You heard him say that? Yes, it's on record, it's on social media. There is evidence to that. And this is a leader who in April 2000, when he was trying to protect, you know, their, their selves from the report of the PTF committee, ran to Sokoto, and the first thing he could do was generate sentiments in April that in the next elections, which would be 2003 then, that Muslims must not elect a Christian. Simply because they were uh, trying to protect themselves from PTF. And if the then government arrested him or attacked him, he would say that it's them attack attacking. Did you confront him with that? Well, then I was a small candidate running for House of Reps then. Uh, the 2023, 2003 elections had not even begun. So to correct your point, I was drafted by my politicians into CPC, we were in the same party, but ever since I began to see those, I kept a safe distance. I mean, how can a leader call on that if they touch your votes, attack? In a civilized society, that's not how you do And again, in December 2018, when I had lost to Atiku in the presidential primaries, TV stations, including yours, must have reported that Buhari was quoted as saying he had instructed the Nigerian armed forces to deal ruthlessly with ballot box snatchers. As a parliamentarian, as a senator, for God's sake, I should know, everybody should know what the provisions of the Electoral Act are. If you snatch a ballot box, uh, there are... Some There's people, the punishment. Some not, think and when you, say, should, when you say that... Yeah, but people, some people think that those punishments should be steeper because they think that... That what, is okay. They what, can what, be steeper, yes. but they have to be provided by law, not a commander-in-chief to order armed forces to deal ruthlessly. That has only one meaning. 
Okay, Believe but, but, me, but, listen, mm -hmm. deal ruthlessly. We are not talking of civil defense or vigilante. You're talking about the Nigerian armed forces to deal ruthlessly for commonly wasn't snatching. To, so just to disabuse your mind. Wasn't that to mm -hmm. deter people who to would do, want to do to that? To disabuse your mind. Yes. Yes, at some point in time, we found ourselves in the same political party. But then I distanced myself very, very quickly. All right, let's bring in our colleagues from Lagos. They've got some questions for you. Go ahead, guys. Well, Senator Yusuf, in spite of that comment, you know, um, at the electionarian period at that time, the president enjoyed a cult following in the North. And uh, I, I dare say that, uh, to a large extent, it still enjoys that followership in Nigeria's North. Which brings me to your own candidacy in the Labour Party. Uh, of course, your uh, uh, presidential candidate is enjoying some uh, support, uh, you know, a, a, a huge magnitude of support across the South and, you know, in, those, in, in the West too, from upwardly mobile, urban thinking youth. But uh, for the North, I'm not quite sure that it is the same, which is, I want to believe, where you come in. I wonder what strategy or how your um, contributions to that uh, 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 the candidature would transform um, your fortunes in the coming elections. How, how are you thinking along those lines and how do you uh, intend to approach it? We're simply reminding the people, remember who is responsible for your uh, current predicament. <laughs> that is the most effective strategy. Then recall the promises that were made before they came to power, calling on our dear people to just realize uh, how the lives of those who came to power has changed dramatically. While their own, their, their own situations worsened, is the strategy we're using. Simply recall way back in 2014, 2015, they were in their farmlands, they were in their respective communities, um, making ends meet and hoping for a better life. Only for them to be greeted with the exact opposite, driven out of their communities, living in secondary schools in the urban areas, living off handouts, while the lifestyles of those that they thought would come to their rescue has tremendously changed for, for their own better. This is all we're doing. And then remind them of the sentiments that were used to put them in this situation. Are you going to make that same mistake? That cult is already gone. It does not exist anymore. If you listen to our points and you listen carefully, you instantly move away from what you call that cult followership, and you begin to reason clearly. Nigeria is sick in need of an expert, a medical doctor that will treat Nigeria, give her the relief that she needs. This is not about who is yours or who claims to be yours, because the area that you mentioned where the cult followership is are the greatest victims of the sentiments used that time. It is very fast fizzling away. Very, very fast, and we are making good progress in converting people to see 2023 is about Nigeria. It's about Nigeria never having it so good in terms but, but, of leaders that have presented but, themselves but to as come Senator, and bring but Nigeria as Senator out of Yusuf, this situation. But as Senator Yusuf, are you yeah. also connecting with uh, the people in the North on a personal level, the same way your candidate in the South uh, is connecting with the people? Absolutely. I can't wait for this program to finish because I'm rushing to Kaduna. I am. The youth groups, the clerics, the very soon, very soon, the cultural, traditional institutions. Uh, but you, you, coming from the background of education, you know, I uh, have the easiest means uh, through 
uh, education, the, my contact with the youth, uh, trades organizations, uh, market women, uh, and, the, and their likes. Yes, we're making that progress. Interesting you talk about education, and um, it's something every candidate seems to have spoken about now, perhaps an attempt to try to yeah. speak to the conscience of young people. But we'll come to that. But there, there's a, there, there are some figures that I came across, which I'm, I'm almost certain from your background or training as an economist, you would also be aware of. And that's uh, the, well, Mark, I spit at it earlier, talking about poverty. But let's be a little more specific. Earlier in the year, uh, I think in March, the Food and Agricultural Organization uh, said 19.4 million Nigerians will face food insecurity by August 2022. That's by this month. Um, perhaps by way of saying it is true, just last month, NBS recorded, uh, well, released figures that spoke to that as well. Um, food insecurity seems to be exacerbated in itself. And there is a proverb in Africa that says if you remove food from poverty, you've significantly solved the problem of poverty. But it will seem that that problem only gets worse. So what's your thinking, the thinking of your campaign about dealing with food insecurity? Because it's not a new one. And it most certainly isn't going to go away without some serious work. His Excellency Governor Peter Obi impressed me so much in the early stages of our relationship when he said that the fertile land, land in the north is the crude oil of Nigeria. Match that with the fact that we are moving from consumption to production. Match that with the fact that we want to immediately get farming communities back to their farmlands, immediately we clear out uh, banditry and uh, insurgency. Food will come back to our houses. Food prices will stabilize. Even if they don't come down, they will stabilize. Uh, they will not rise in the manner you've seen them do in the last uh, eight years. It, 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 literally, we can say it may go past without saying. This is the time for healing Nigeria. The poverty you're talking about, there is um, absolute poverty, there is abject poverty, and there is relative poverty. What we're really suffering in Nigeria is relative poverty. Uh, we're not even close to absolute, not to talk of abject, and it is in that order that you see it. There are certain cultural practices that also serve as buffer, especially um, because of the large family structure in Nigeria. And I can tell you particularly in the north, because of the Muslim um, culture and injunction on feeding the poor as part of the religion. So even those who could ordinarily have been suffering, you, they will always find themselves with food in their houses. The Nigerian cultures are so good, so rich in caring for each other. And there is Christmas. Uh, you find hampers in people's houses up till just before Easter. There is Easter where there's a great deal of... Uh, just, just a quick one on that one, uh, Senator. Uh, if you don't mind me butting in, I think it'll be good to hear you give some specifics on how it'll be approached. Uh, especially, I'm talking about food production and all. I'm speaking about this because since like 77, 78, Nigeria has been struggling, literally struggling, to jumpstart again its agricultural program. First with the Operation Feed the Nation by the Obasanjo government of the time, succeeded by the Green Revolution of the Shagari government, and eventually the uh, Better Life program of the Babangida government, the, the Directorate for Food, Roads, and Rural Infrastructure and all, and of course the, Obasanjo, the second Obasanjo government, the democratic government, and everyone until now have been struggling with the effort to jumpstart again Nigeria's agricultural fortunes. 
in specific terms, if you don't mind sharing, at least give, giving some snippets, how will this problem be solved? Well, um, in addition to what we said, um, consumption to production, if you are needing the specifics, I can tell you better mechanization uh, of agriculture or farming in Nigeria, better credits and easier access to credit in Nigeria, and then development of markets, development of agricultural area, expansion um, all year round agriculture, that is irrigation, um, production, local production of uh, chemicals and pesticides, and also we will explore and expand our production of fertilizers so that we reduce import of fertilizers. Then everything we say, we top it up with our background in education, better, better education, better farm, uh, better extension services to the farmers wherever you are. But the most important thing now is to solve the problem of insecurity and get our farmers back to their farmlands. I hope for now, these are as specific as I can be. But right. particularly well, that issue of credit that I told you, okay. you are dealing with a banker as a president who knows how to reach out to the people and put money in their hands. All right, we'll talk about some of the issues raised when we return from this break in just a moment. Yeah. Do stay with us. Welcome back. We are with Dati Baba Ahmed, the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Well, you say the most important challenge which is facing us now is security, which yes. we need to address. Yes. Because, I mean, even for you to have a stable economy, there has to be that security of lives and property. How will your party, or what is the party's philosophy towards addressing security? We will account for every square meter of Nigeria. We will expand, and in doing that, we will expand or um, recruit more security agencies. Emphasis with law enforcement than on defense, because the police needs to be expanded, or literally multiplied. What do you well, think has... Uh, well, let, let me answer his question. Yes, I'm, I'm actually trying listen, to... Uh, Listen, Nigerians are our bosses, yeah. and when they want to know, we should let them know. Indeed. Yes. I just wanted so, to expatiate a bit more on it, because when you say you will recruit, let's be mindful of the fact that in 2015, hmm. Nigerians heard these same promises and elected a okay, new I'll government. Give you, so I'll give you a different I, I, what, what I want to know is what do you know has stood in the way of police recruitment and the police recruitment process, even into the military, into, even into all of the uh, security agencies. What has stood in the way? What has been the biggest obstacle? And what are you hoping to do differently? Um, you are speaking about two completely different people with different motives, different histories, and different focus in life. I, speaking for myself, I have never done, will never do what I, I, I will never say what I don't intend to do. Mm. Okay. This politics that I'm in, by creation, I'm not really, really a politician. But because I say what is wrong in, with Nigeria in Nigeria, then I have to wake up and live up to it and get into politics. Everything I said about poor state of education, I got myself invested in education. The same thing with His Excellency Governor Peter Obi. He was a businessman, he was a banker, dissatisfied with how Nigeria was going, and he came into politics. Now, if you are looking at 2015, you are looking at a completely different world dynamics. Somebody who lost power to his colleagues that felt he was incompetent and wanted to jump back, back to power by all means. 
you're talking about um like so, my friend let me finish like mm -hmm. my friend who called from lagos called followership the moment you find people that cannot per se reason you keep them with that incapacity to reason and continue to misuse them we in the labor party are giving out enlightenment think before you do anything open your hearts open your minds and realize what nigeria is and what politics is about so we are completely different do not even put us in that kind of what happened in 20, 2015 was a mistake it was a tragedy what we keep saying is that never allow yourselves to be deceived being deceived once we can have sympathy for you being deceived again is your fault your fault as an individual your fault as a community your fault uh, as a nation let me come back to answer your question on uh, security. security yeah so well, i'm just trying let, let me, me just answer let, that. let me do you just want to know this no, 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 no just no, a no. moment I, I must i must what what you what i what you <laughs> seem to what, what you seem to be saying is that there was no intention of doing anything different by the police uh, by the administration by this current administration is that what you're insinuating that is exactly what i am saying okay. not just insinuating that is what i'm saying okay so because the office of the president commander in chief federal republic of nigeria is technically one of the most powerful offices in the entire world remove the monarchs okay so talk about the, what you do differently hold on, now hold on in the middle east Failing, failing to deliver on campaign promises says that you came without intention to uh, fulfill those promises. Now, right. to answer your question on insecurity, uh -huh. recruitment, training, welfare, um, intelligence, and networking. These are what we're going to work for. And the combination of all these things we will use to account for every square meter of Nigeria, be it Sambisa, be it uh, several local governments in Kaduna, be it four local governments in Niger State, be it several local governments in Zamfara or everywhere in Nigeria. You will never come out and attack any place of worship and escape into thin air. Oh. It will never happen. You will never come and liberate people and escape into thin air. We will account for every square meter of nigeria we know who is there we know what is going on there okay anything that goes wrong uh, okay we will fish out and make sure it never okay. happens well, again well winding down but about what you said in terms of what you will do yes when you say funding yes at the moment there are trillions going to army uh, and security as it were when you say recruitment the several directives on the president to increase the capacity of the police to recruit there was a specific case of six thousand policemen so some of what you said you will do is already been done yet we'll have these challenges why how will this achieve contrary results no some of the things we said we'll do are not being done like which I one dis i disagree with you like which one like the procurements like the funding yeah that you said we are coming from the background where we extract maximum benefit at minimal cost. So the money that you hear being spent now, mm -hmm. doing very little, we will spend that money and get the very best result in terms of defense equipment, security gadgets, technology, uh, all the way down to trickle to the food that our and to the uniform that they wear at the front line. The food and their medical care at the front line, we are that meticulous that nobody will water down the quality because they are making money out of the system. That will not happen. Then the recruitment. Mm -hmm. The moment you lose the respect of your followers for reasons bordering on they think you are benefiting unduly. You and your family and friends and cronies are benefiting all around you. It will trickle down so quickly. Is that what that is happening? That is what is happening. How did no, you come no, to that nobody. conclusion? Because the lifestyle of 
people who were, before coming into government, dramatically changed. These are people who, when they come to Abuja, they had to go begging for how to go back to Kaduna. Overnight, they are multi-billionaires. I don't care how much you have by my nature. What we worry about is how you made it. If you made it at the expense of Nigerian security, then we have a problem with you. Okay, what do you think, or again, if you want to refer it as a party's philosophy, that's fine. Yes. Concerning security votes to yes. state governors, I say what? Yes. What should be done with it? Should it stay or go? It should be monitored. Um, security is important. The decisions governors or anybody for that matter in an executive office takes, they are very delicate, very, very difficult decisions to make. Some of them really, really are hard to back up. But then it gives no right for anyone to pocket security funds or security um, votes. No rights whatsoever. So, uh, to anyone. and that is why you need people with scruples, people who have been comfortable, people who are not seeking to go into government to change their lives. Uh, we've been saying uh -huh. we're not coming into government. We're not looking for money in government. We are looking to run a government in money. Uh, Excellency Peter will be look at his does not have that kind of clout, jobless. And the only way they'll make a living is from his presidency. He doesn't have it. I don't have it, OK? He is a very successful, he was a very successful businessman. OK, well, why did I miss that? Lean, now, a very lean structure. OK. So there is, I, no, there is no demand on him. I know there was many opportunities. When you bring to... in a leader, OK, that was so to say, thrown out of government and has not had any trade or business or discipline that he can fall back to with an army of hangers on. And they are coming into power. These are people who, before 2015, have, you know, um, perfected the act of extracting money from politicians and misusing party contributions. Right. When they get to the presidency, what will happen? Disaster will happen. Okay, we're trying to understand so, that point, though. But yes. are you yes. uh, suggesting you make some political offices part-time? No. No? Okay. Uh, there are, you're, this is not a question you're asking. Uh, you're just dropping what, this comment now. No, no, no. Uh, we're trying to understand your point, what yes. you're saying, that yes. some of them try to extract certain funds from government. These are people yeah. who did not have any livelihood. Exactly. So if they were to get a livelihood, should they make it part-time so they can focus on something I else? Am, That's why we're asking. I, I am making a clear-cut difference between what you have today okay. and between what you may have coming right. in to rescue Nigeria. Okay, just one more thing before we go. Uh, when you say that security votes will be monitored, it's a federal system. Is yes. the federal government going to monitor security vote for state governors? How? No, the Nigerian constitution is very clear. The states, uh, the states are mentioned in the constitution as a tier of government within their own systems. They have uh, the le state legislature with committees on state security. They have office of the auditor, general of the state, within those systems. You see, one thing about politics, is that it is the people who run their government. If every element, if every person succumbs cheating the system, then you're going to have the kind of situation we have now. All right. There must be good people. Democracy is meant to be operated by good people. Democracy is meant for good people. Not those who, whatever you do, will exploit it. <laughs> but Mr. Dati, that, that's why this we have. This is a time in Nigeria. That's why we have checks and balances because they expect that people will abuse certain things. So isn't that why those systems are there? That is why you need the good elements to overpower the bad elements. All right. 
There will be several times an opportunity to highlight and shed a lot more light on some of what you heard if uh, you'd like to hear a lot more. But we have to thank you, Mr. Dati Ahmed, for coming on. He's the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Thank you and all the best. My pleasure.